Hey there, this is Aaron. In this video, what I'm going to do is some work on this antique photograph from the 1920s to see whether or not we can give this person some life by giving them more space to breathe and then probably put them in an environment as well. So let's go ahead and do this. Uh, in terms of, say, restoring the image, I'm definitely not going to be going in and doing anything, you know, pixel by pixel. Uh, what I'm going to do are just a couple of quick things to give it some more definition. Auto tone and some auto contrast. And that alone gives some definition. If we zoom in, there aren't a lot of pixels to work with as, as far as trying to add in more fine line detail and things like that. So let's just zoom in here. And with that being done, I'm going to show you the under sharpen filter unsharp mask. And what this does is gives a little bit more definition to highlights by, let's see here, zoom in for you. So we'll see on this preview, without, with. So on, off, on, off. So you can see that it's brightening. And the thing that we want to watch out for is that it's going to give it some more pop. And you can see how it is sort of just unblurring things a little bit but we don't want it to be overdone and blown out. It is going to be fairly subtle. So we're going to say okay on that. So we've done a little bit of just basics when it comes to sharpening things up a little bit, and that's great. So now I'm going to give this guy more space here around the top for his head and on the shoulder. So I'll hit C and that'll bring up my crop tool and I'm going to give us some height like so but I also want him to be more or less centered in my frame. So I'm going to do it like this. And I think that that should give a decent composition. So I just want him centered in the frame overall. So this is great. I'm going to hit M to bring up my selection tool because now I want to select all of him. Let's see if there are any obstacles to avoid. We have a flaw up here, so I'll I'll select that out and we have the top of his head that needs to be finished off with a fairly unique ha hairstyle so let's go in and I will select as much of this without going over so we'll avoid that flaw at the top we'll bring it to here where are we now so there is our new canvas we've got our selection made so I'm going to invert it so now it's this area that's chosen generative fill generate and we'll see him probably just start to pop off of the screen as soon as it adds this extra space around him and gives him dimension to be living in. It seems to really just add a lot almost instantly. And I think that this is one of those cases. So number one, number two, or number three. I think number three makes sense. He's a little narrow in the shoulders, but he looks like a slim guy. So there you go. I think that's pretty cool. And let's see what we're working with here for pixels. 800 by 1200 would be a nice portrait size ratio for this fellow. So now I've got a canvas that is this big. What I'm going to do is I'm going to give the AI some room for interpretation here. I love how it finished off the top of his head, by the way. But I'm going to bring it all the way over to here. and now we've got that much of a selection area. I'm going to invert the selection. So now it is this big space that's going to be filled. I'm first going to do generative fill on this as it is with hopefully just a plain background that's going to finish down because I want the AI to be focusing on him and his clothing as the main subject to be processing on here. Hopefully that the clothes are going to come out looking uniform and not all wrinkled or mangled. Let's see what we end up with here. That isn't too bad at all. Let's have a look at these hands though. It appears that he is not happy with us. Let's check number two. That isn't bad. Number three just looks a little bit something. But this is, I'll take that all day long. That looks like a great image there and hands are well formed. Perfect. It does still, you know, it's slightly blurred, but that keeps with the vintage style of things. I think that's excellent. So now we have 
an 800 by 1200 portrait of this fellow, he's really coming along. I'm going to flatten the image. And now I'm going to use select subject. And this magic word selects all around him with a beautiful mask, just like that. And I'm going to invert the selection here. So now let's try to put him in an environment. And let's say he is at a cocktail party, but I'm going to say in the background is my habit because in my mind that's telling AI put him in that environment, but don't put that in the foreground, meaning hopefully it's going to be sort of blurred motion blur or Gaussian blur in the background. We'll see whether or not it delivers what I'm looking for. If not, sometimes I find with environments I have to render a couple of times. That isn't bad. He's got his drink here. Number two, that's also kind of kind of sharp. And number three, if that glass were a smaller proportion, it would be great. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep this, but I'm going to quickly flatten. And I'm going to go here and ask the AI to remove that object. And I think that we'll still have enough happening over on this side of the screen that it will fill out the composition. I don't want anything that's going to be distracting away from his face. So I think we've done a pretty good job here so far of giving him a new lease on life. We didn't give him a name. Let's call him Uncle Harold. So there you go, Harold. You're looking pretty good. Number two. Or number three? I think number three. So what have we done? We took this gentleman's small headshot that was cropped off at the top. We only had to part of his shoulder. You know, it was roughly like so. And we've added all of this space, added a complete wardrobe for him, well-formed hands. I think he looks great. And it doesn't really look to me like he was just kind of clip arted in there. Something that I will do often is I'll just take my blur tool with a fairly big brush, just merge these, and I will just fairly liberally go around with a blur like that. It's nothing that's really visible. I'm not going to hit his eyes, but it just kind of adds something as far as bringing in a little bit, especially with a vintage image like that. So there you go. I think we've done a great job for Harold. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, then like and subscribe to encourage me to make more of them. And I will see you the next time.